Solarman shows me uh, how my system is working. It has one display showing me the generation. At the moment we have it 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, we get nearly 1.7 kilowatts still from the, from the panels. The house is consuming 1.1. This is due to the washing machine still running and the two air cons from Veco is still nothing coming, zero. And even now the battery gets charged with 350 watt because the consumption is lower than the generation. And this is good because usually with the panels facing to sunrise, we have seven to eight hours yeah, and, uh, for the battery to get charged. It is 3 p.m. now and still we have more uh, generation than we consume so this is really great and you can see a solar uh, system here in the Philippines really gives you more than seven eight hours to get power only after 3 p.m. the panels go into the shadow and then generation is down this is just the lit, uh, overview we don't really need and this shows me in the app the daily graph for the generation and also the monthly graph and here you can see for today it is more cloudy than yesterday but still today I we generated 17 plus kilowatt I think we will end up 18 to 19 kilowatt because the Sun has not set yet yesterday was also very cloudy and it was 18 kilowatt the day before was even more cloudy but still nearly 16 kilowatt and the first two days 19 kilowatt but cloudy and this drop here doesn't mean it got more cloudy but this means the generation was so good that the battery was full here and because I'm not doing the net metering the inverter does not know where to put the yeah, amount of energy it gets from the solar panels so it shuts down the solar panels yeah because it does not need this power usually in this case if you own a house you really should go for net metering and then this amount of overproduce would uh, be given to veco or the local supplier and they pay you i think five peso per kilowatt so that you can uh, also add uh, earn money with this and the first day was the best from my recording and it shows you how good the production runs so here is six o'clock sunrise I think there was a little cloudy and this is why this is not going up here so on a totally sunny day I think I have a full production of over one kilowatt from six o'clock until yeah, here 5, 3.30 to 4 p.m. that's the end but you see it's really going up very fast and then we are here around 2.5 kilowatt for yeah let's say seven hours at least before it drops again and I can now overlay the charge power that means how much is the battery charged so here is the input from the solar panels in kilowatt and here's it you see the input for the battery and this is three kilowatt and here's four kilowatt and on this day you can see the charging was about 2.5 kilowatt maximum for the battery and then here you see when the production slowly goes down or if the battery is so full that uh, the production is shut down by the inverter then you don't get the battery charged but as soon we need more because the air cons kick in it gets charged again this is what you can see here if I go one day to the future here then you can see this even better yeah, that here is charging is stopped because the battery was already full and you see here it's charging with more than 3000 watt because uh, the battery is the inverter limits at the moment with 80 amps and uh, 50 watt also my maximum can be charged 4 kilowatt and 
this is the most cloudy day we just had generation of 16 kilowatt but even here you see charging still happens because the consumption is not so much yeah on a cloudy day you don't need that much aircon and even this means that here i would say the battery stopped charging because it was full yeah so even here the battery still gets charged in three o'clock four o'clock so even on a very cloudy day with only 15.9 kilowatts generated power because we don't use that much aircon the 10 kilowatt battery is fully charged and if i overlay now for the for these three days i show you the consumption overlay so this is mostly uh yeah the aircons running so you see here is 0 0.8 other 800 watt so this is about 400 watt that is the yeah ground usage ground consumption and then you see how the air can switch on to cool more the ref a little bit but that's not much mostly is my computing system that you can see here because this is uh, from here from this line you would draw to this is a little bit and here you see this is mostly my computing system uh, using about 200 250 watts if i go back one day or to the first day yeah with most sunny most hot and then i show you consumption because that was the first day and it was very hot and i wanted to play with the system so i activated all three air cons and then you see here we use about 1.5 kilowatt and even 2 kilowatt with the three air cons so if i install the next aircon in the sala which is a 2.5 horsepower i definitely need more generation from the solar uh, because this will go up by at least 500 watt if we use this huge aircon so what we can also see is the on-grid power that comes from veco yeah this is how much veco is delivering over the day this is 800 watt 1.3 and this is now the overlaid generated power from the solar panel so you see this part here is the veco because there is no sunlight and then the production of the solar panel starts and the veco is at zero and then slowly the production goes down until here in the night when the VECO kicks in and this gap, I unfortunately can only overlay two charts, this gap will be filled with the battery. So I have to switch this and use the discharge power from the battery. This here is a graphical mistake, but you see how the battery from the day before was charged, comes in until it's empty and here usually it is charged that's why it's still empty and here the battery starts taking over yeah the battery gets discharged and the battery yeah up to two kilowatt delivers power enough to run the air cons and only here now it starts to go down because it's empty and then the inverter switches automatically to grid power from vehicle i can show this better in a on this day if i now overlay this with the on-grid power you see on-grid power is in the morning but there's nothing in the night from veco because we didn't use that much uh, power here yeah if i show you our consumption you see this is really low uh, 800 watt and it's a 10 kilowatt battery so it can supply the house for about 12 hours so the consumption was low and then that means the discharge of the battery here yeah here the battery is charged this part and here the battery kicks in but the battery still has enough power here to power the house so there is no veco and if i go to the next day then you see here the discharge power of the battery here is still enough yeah 1.2 kilowatt the battery still can deliver and then it goes slowly down 
until here. And now I overlay the discharge here with the on-grid power and you see the vehicle starts very slow. This is just 700 watt from the vehicle yeah, coming in and then here is down again and even then yeah only here is a little bit this is when the inverter switches the full battery and shuts down the solar panels so then there's a small peak where we get Veco to compensate for this but it's only for some seconds but you see usually on a regular day the capacity of the battery is enough to cover the day seven o'clock is solar generation and then the battery and only in the morning I still use some hundred watts from the Veco because the battery capacity is not that good for complete uh, powering the house and that way I can also show you now how much we have generated over on the days this is in the month's view so I can see how much do I generate per day and if I go back to April then you see we are nearly here 20 kilowatt that the system generates and here also 20 kilowatt it's more cloudy now so we are a little low but that's not bad but what interests me most is the discharge energy for the battery and the charge battery charge energy and now it crashed but it sometimes happens because this is not meant to run okay so And this shows me now on a daily basis, I switch to month's view here. This is the daily view now, how much I charged the battery and how much I discharged the battery. The first days were lost, but I can see um, this is charging and discharging. So here I'm around the nine to 10 kilowatt range and discharging also is about nine kilowatt. So I can say the battery is about 90% usage and I can also go one month further and charge energy. So how much can I put into the battery? And I would say this is nine kilowatt goes a little down because it was more cloudy. Don't know why it's so low here. And how much can I discharge? Uh, then I say here we are be around eight kilowatt discharge and that's not bad. The capacity of the battery is 10 kilowatt and you should use it by 80%. So the discharge and charge, charging is maybe 90% and discharge is 80% and that's quite good. But it's just a week so I will adjust this maybe end of the month and I can see how the battery performs and how the system performs. Yeah, I hope this gave you a good insight. This is now updated again and you see generation now is down. Now it's 315, so 15 minutes later we are down to 650 watt generation only because now we are going sunset and shadow. The house consumes one kilowatt still because of the washing machine and the air con. So now the battery kicks in with 600 watt and it's really smooth. So you don't see or hear the clicking here of my uh, un uninterruptible power supply. This is for one week. I didn't hear the clicking of the relays at all. So the inverter really is a good uh, appliance and gives out a pure sine wave with a regulated voltage and that's much better for the house than before. So I can really recommend using such a system.